Hey, what's up, boxers? This is Zach Rosette with BuildBox. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this very, very simple build box game where you have a cube going down a path and you're collecting diamonds and you can see your score up there at the top and when you hit an enemy you burst into a bunch of cubes and then you can start your game over it's a very 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 simple game so let's go ahead and let's just jump into this and I will show you how to make this from scratch so I'll go ahead and exit out of this preview I'll go ahead and I'll also save this simple game here and I'll, I'll give you this BB doc at the end of this tutorial so that you can have it as a reference but let's go ahead and let's start by going over here to the welcome screen and then we're going to click create new and then we're going to click create 3d game okay great so buildbox starts you off with this nice grassy field here i'm going to go ahead and i'll show you a few basic camera movements and how to navigate here in the scene editor okay this is the scene editor here in the, in the center and so what you want to do is there's a couple different ways that you can control the camera first i'm going to show you that you can zoom in and out with your scroll wheel Okay, so that's an important one to know. So zoom in and out with your scroll wheel, or you might use two fingers if you're on a, a mouse pad or something. You, basically, whatever your scrolling method is, um, that will zoom in and out. Next, you can hold space bar down, and it turns your mouse uh, clicker there into a little glove. And then you can right click, and that will rotate around the scene. So that is the, uh, you hold spacebar down and then you right click and that will rotate around the scene. Then you can also hold spacebar down and just do a regular left click and that will allow you to pan around the scene. And then finally, the last one is you let go of the space bar and you just use your right click and you're able to sort of look around the scene almost like you're in the scene and you're just like looking left, looking right, and look what's over there. So that is all of the controls for the camera. So let's go ahead, let's keep moving. The first thing that BuildBox does is it starts you off with this nice grassy field here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna select our ground and we're going to turn the ground type to no ground. We're not gonna use a ground for this tutorial. Uh, we're just going to use this empty space. Okay, next, I'm going to take the end of my scene here and I'm going to use my move tool to stretch my scene and move my scene down here just a little bit. And I'm also going to take the start of my scene and I'm gonna move it back here just a little bit as well. Okay, so the start of your scene and the end of your scene is where all of the action happens within your game. So you, if you want things to show up in your scene, you, uh, you want them to be between these brackets and usually your gameplay takes place between the, the start of your scene and the end of your scene. Okay, next, let's go up here to the asset library and let's grab a few assets that we're going to use for this game. So I'm going to go over here to Asset Library. I'm going to select Asset Library. First, I'm going to double click on Cube, and we're going to use that cube as a platform to go down uh, to slide down uh, the path. And then we're also going to uh, select Cone, and then we're going to hit Add to Project, and that will also add a cone. And this is going to be sort of our enemy object uh, for our game. And then uh, next, let's go over here to Smart Assets and let's grab a diamond. And you can just double click on diamond and that will add it to our game as well. Okay, great. So we've got coins to collect, we've got enemies, we've got a platform to run on, and then we've got our main character here. So let's go ahead and let's exit out of the asset library. Let's take this cube that we started off with and let's move it up here to characters. Let's go over here to the right to the options panel and let's change the name of this character to main character. Okay, great. And then let's go ahead, let's go over here, select this one, select uh, uh, characters again. And uh, you can see some more options opened up over here. Let's check a uh, collision group and let's change the collision group to character. And then uh, let's make sure that our character is stuck on dynamic, which it is. Okay, that's great. That's what we want. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's rename uh, the character uh, main character. I think when you move the character up into the character's menu and then you try to rename it, uh, that doesn't work. So you gotta you can move it up into the character's menu, then you gotta click out and you click back in, and then you it'll register all your changes. So uh, let's go ahead and grab our cube here. Let's uh, rename this cube platform. This is going to be the platform that we run on. 
okay? And let's change the collision group to platform. Okay, and we'll talk about collision groups a little bit more uh, later on. Uh, but basically, the logic is is that sometimes it's good to group things together. Like, let's say we want certain things to happen every single time we run into an enemy. So that means we'd want to put like all enemies in a collision group in the collision group enemy, so that when we collide with enemies, certain things happen. So that's the logic. But we'll talk a little bit more about it later on. So let's bring out our platform into our scene here. Let's let's scale down the platform by by half uh, in the y direction. So let's do 0.5 in the y. Let's go ahead. And let's change the position here to zero. Let's also change the y position uh, to be negative 0.5. So we'll lower it uh, to on the ground a little bit. So what that does is that brings it just below the grid. Okay, that's why I lowered it 0.5. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and center it at uh, zero as well. Okay, great. Now let's go ahead. I'm going to switch over here to my scale tool and I'm going to stretch my scale out here on the right equally on both sides uh, using this red here using the, the X scale tool. And then I'm also going to uh, stretch it out using the blue using the Z scale tool and then I will just reposition it a little bit over here so that it's a little bit more evened out and then stretch it out again. And the main idea here is we want it to stretch past the beginning of our scene and the end of our scene. We want to make sure that it crosses uh, those lines. Okay, next, let's go ahead, let's select our platform again. And it, it's really hard to see this white character on the white platform. So let's go over here to 3D model and let's change the color of our platform. So we'll go over here to color and let's change it to like a nice green, but then let's bring it down a little bit, kind of mute it a little bit. Let's do a little bit, yeah, a little bit of a kind of a lighter green. Okay, cool. Something, something like that, a nice muted green. Okay, great, I think this looks good. Let's also, let's shrink down our character just a little bit because the character looks a little bit big. So I'm gonna do 0.5, 0.5, 0.5 okay that looks good looks better on our on our on our platform and then one thing to note is that when you add a new cube from the asset library into your objects menu it's automatically going to be set uh, the physics type is automatically going to be set to dynamic which means that the platform is going to fall just like you know gravity is affecting it normally so if i were to press play right now the ground and everything is just going to fall like you can see right there what we want to do is we want to set it to static and what that does is that makes it uh, so that the collision shape doesn't move. And so then our cube is able to land nicely on our platform. Okay, great. So let's go ahead, let's add in another scene here uh, to our game. I'm going to select the start scene and then I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard and that is going to duplicate the scene. I'll go ahead and rename the scene here, scene one. And one thing to note is, is that when you duplicate scenes, you actually duplicate everything in the scene. So I actually duplicated the character as well, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna go into scene one, I'm gonna select that character and I'm gonna hit backspace on my keyboard or you can hit delete delete as well on your keyboard and that will delete the asset from the scene. Okay, next let's go ahead and uh, let's add in a cone uh, enemy here to our scene. So I'll go ahead and bring in this cone. I'll lift it up a little bit, something like this. And then let's scale it down because that's really awfully big. Let's do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5. Okay, great. And then the same thing with the cone, the cone is set to dynamic as well. So we're gonna set it to static so it doesn't move. And then let's change the, uh, let's change the color to a nice kind of like a darker color, something like this. Yeah, perfect. Okay, a little bit of blacker color and then let's just plant it right into the ground. Okay, awesome, that looks good. And then let's go ahead and let's grab our diamond and we'll move our diamond into our scene and we'll lift our diamond up above our cone. So let's also, let's grab our cone real fast and let's make sure it's centered in our scene. So we'll go ahead and do the position as zero so that it's nice and centered. And uh, yeah, that looks good. Next, we'll do the same thing with our diamond. We'll go ahead and 
put zero in for the x direction or the x position so that it's centered in our scene. And then we'll lift it up and then let's scale it down as well. Let's do 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5 because it's just too big. Okay, great. So now let's go over here to cone. Let's change it. Let's change a few more things to make this uh, appropriate for an enemy. Let's go ahead and call this uh, spike enemy. Spike enemy. And then let's change the collision group uh, to enemy as well. Okay, so we're about ready to start making some, you know, some real magic happen here with our game. We're going to start sending our character down the path, and we're going to make it so that it collides with this enemy and defeats itself or it becomes defeated and then we're able to collect coins. So the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna select our main character over here in the asset, asset panel, and we're gonna double click on it. Okay, this is gonna take uh, us into our main character's node map. And you know what, uh, right now, why don't we all just go ahead and hit Control S or Command S on our keyboard, and let's just save our game real fast. So I'm gonna save uh, my game to my desktop, and I'm gonna go ahead and call this Simple Game demo all right um, and you can name it whatever you like okay cool so we went ahead we went ahead and we saved our BB doc now let's go ahead let's get our cube to start moving down the path so I'm gonna go over here to movement and I'm gonna add in a move node and then let's enable it let's hook it up to the start node and let's um, let's make it so that it's moving at a speed of negative 10 away from us it's going down the path um, so it's speeded at a speed of negative 10. And there's something uh, I'm going to point out a little bit later here with the Y constraint being zero. We're going to change that, but I want to explain that in, in, in a little bit. So um, let's also, I want to make it so this character can jump over the spikes. So let's bring out a jump node and let's bring out some controls. I want to make it so that whenever I touch the screen, uh, it's going to jump. So I'm going to bring out a touch node. So we'll enable the touch node and then when it's pressed, we want to jump. Let's hook that up. When it's pressed, we want to jump. Okay, great. Put these up here. Let's go ahead and give it a jump force of 10. And let's get rid of the angular velocity. And uh, for right now, let's go ahead and let's just see what we're uh, working with. So um, there's something to note, okay? So with the, um, with the move node, we have a y constraint now at zero and that is going there's a difference between using zero and using none in build box especially with this move node so let's go ahead let's take a look at what it looks like when i press uh, zero so i'll press play and you can see that it's not going up or down it's oh geez it's starting to spin uh, it clipped that spike enemy there that's kind of awesome uh but you can see that it's stopped falling now. It's, it's no longer landing on the path. And that's because we put zero in there. If we put none in for the Y, it's going to allow for the char character to fall. And we can also jump, which is, which is fantastic. Um, you can also see that the character is kind of spinning and, and flying all around. And we don't want that. So we're going to, we're going to go ahead and fix that Y constraint. So, or we're going to go ahead and fix that constraint on that. So we're going to go to the start node here and we're going to change the position factor to from x uh, from 1 to 0 and what that does is it makes it so it can no longer move in the x direction anymore we do want to move up and down in the y and we do want to move forward and backward in the z but we don't want to move side to side in this game uh, next we don't really want the character to rotate at all so we're going to go ahead and just put 0 0 0 on uh, the rotation factor so it can't rotate at all anymore so we can, we can go ahead and press play we can see that so I'm going to be jumping now and it's not rotating or at all it's not spinning it's not doing any, any of that stuff that it was before okay and that's going to go ahead and wrap up part one of this series in the next video i'm going to show you how to follow the character down the path with the camera i'm going to show you how to hook up a cool ui a score label so that you can see what your score is and i'm going to show you how to create a cool defeated animation using a debris explosion node so please join me in part two of this series and i will see you in the next video